His life was a life of warfare. He put himself in a state of fear and anxiety, fear of death and anxiety in the whole period of time. Some of those wars were incredibly fatal. Like people will know Uhud, the war of Uhud was incredibly problematic for the Muslims. To the extent where the Prophet Muhammad would make dua to, the, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if we are wiped away from the face of the earth, then no one will worship you, O oh Allah. So the Muslims had to persevere and be determined in cases where there were only a few hundred individuals. In the Battle of Ahzab, which we referred to in the previous episode, there were 10,000 individuals waiting outside of Al Medina, waiting outside to take over and to destroy the Muslims. And they were defensively digging trenches around the, the city. This was the state, by the way, and this was the context where in which these predictions, predictions that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu would make about conquering a sham, the Roman Empire, which if you put things in perspective, eclipses the American Empire. I mean, look, look, look at the American Empire. For how long has it been around? And I'm calling it an American Empire for a reason. For how long has that been around? Let's be honest. I mean, the Cold War probably ended about, what, 30 years ago? Maybe even less than 30 years ago. So it's been the dominant superpower of the world for 30 years. We're talking about the Roman Empire, which has been around since, you know, 55 a, a BC or something like that, before Christ. And this man, in that state of weakness, in that situation where they're digging around trenches, around a city where 10,000 people are threatening them from different tribes, is saying that I can see when we're going to conquer this place, the Roman Empire. Not just the Roman Empire, of course, but the Persian Empire and this place and that place and the other place. Absolutely incredible. But let's focus on one thing at a time because we talked about the truce that was put in place of Hudaybiyah. And when that truce was broken, when that truce was broken, now things were turning, the game was changing, you could say, 100%. And this brings us to the last part of this episode, which is of Fath Mecca itself, which took place on the 19th of Ramadan, on the 8th year of Hijrah, after Hijrah, the conquest of Ramadan, or the conquest of Mecca, where the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he gathered an army of 10,000 individuals, after having been threatened by 10,000, as we said, in the Battle of Ahzab, now he has 10,000 individuals who marched towards Mecca in secrecy. And they went through the Prophet tilting his head in humility. And he was wearing a red bandana with incredible symb symbolism there. Wearing a red bandana or a turban, you could say. Going towards the Kaaba, the place where Ibrahim alayhi salam, him and his son built this place. And they went together to the Kaaba. And of course, the symbolism is so clear here. The imagery is so vivid here. 360 idols broken, he broke them with a miraculous turning of his staff, just like the way Moses used to do. And those idols would fall and break in miraculous format. And he stood there. He stood there and the gates of the Kaaba are open. And he made his speech. And he started by saying, La ilaha illallah, wahda, nasara abda, wa sadaqa wa'da, wa hazam al ahzab, wahda. He says, there is no God worthy of worship except for Allah. There is no God worthy of worship except for Allah. He, i.e. Allah, give, gave victory to his slave. And he was truthful in his promise. And he destroyed or he defeated the Ahzab, the parties, i.e. those enemies of Islam. Wahda by himself. 
this speech that he said, subhanAllah, is an incredible thing which tells us about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa character. He says, Kullukum min Adam wa Adam min Turab. All of you are from Adam and Adam is from dust. And then he quoted the verse in the Quran. Ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqanakum min dhakarin wa untha wa ja'alnakum sha'uban wa qaba'il li ta'arafu inna akramakum aindallahi atqaq. Oh human beings, we have made you. We have made you into from a, a man and a woman and created you into tribes and nations so that you may get to know one another and certainly the best of you are those who are most God conscious. Now, Bilal ibn Rabah, the black man who was tortured in Mecca. Remember, we talked about him in the beginning. And there is a saying in the Arabic language, you could say it's an Arabic proverb, Kema tu dinu tu dan. Another way you could say is Al-Jaza'u min jinsil amal You know Al-Jaza'u min jinsil amal In other words, this, these sayings mean that The recompense will be in accordance with The type of action that you do So just like Bilal ibn Rabah Who was being mistreated And humiliated And had to scream in resistance Ahadun ahad Was being tortured in Mecca now he is doing the adhan on top of the Kaaba, proclaiming the Tawheed in honor and in strength and dignity and Izzah, might, over and above the enemy that used to torture him. Which shows you that the tables will turn. The lesson for us is, if you're facing a humiliating circumstances, so long as you are on the truth and you have faith, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will turn the tables over and it might not be today it might not be tomorrow but you will face your enemy that is oppressing you and you will be victorious over them just like Bilal was victorious over his enemy just like the Muslims were victorious over their enemies and just like the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was victorious over his enemies and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam turned around and says what do you think I'm going to do with you? What did he say? He says, what do you think I'm going to be doing with you now? What do, what, do you want, what, what do you think I should do with you? Kind of thing. And of course, they wanted the best thing to be done to them. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa who is rahmatan lil alameen. He is the mercy of all humankind. In this situation, where he could have massacred, just like the Crusades have done. He could have massacred those individuals in that place that were against him. He forgave those individuals and he quoted the verse in Surah Yusuf, that there is no tathrib on them that day. They will not, it's, it's, a, it's a word of forgiveness that Allah is, is, he is forgiving them in a sense, giving them a new chance. Giving them a new ch a chance. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam done tawaf around the, the Kaaba with the camel. And he prayed. Some say two, some say six raka'at and so on and so forth. The point being is, this was the, this was the wa'ad, the promise of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in the Quran. So what will make us think that we're safe from the promise of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala about the hereafter, heaven and hell, about the day of judgment, about all of those things that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also promised about the future. These things are all future things. Just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knew what was going to happen in the future when it relates to these things, dunyawi things, material things, He also knows what's going to happen in the future relating to the, the akhirah type things as well. In the next episode, we're going to be talking about the expansion into Asham, which is one of the major, first major expansions, excursions outside of the Arabian Peninsula. In the meantime, I trust you'll, you'll have taken many lessons from this. I, sh I certainly have. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
amazing video um in the beginning he said he spoke about how islam was weak in the beginning i think it's only normal for something to um be weak in the sense that even your faith won't be that strong but as time goes by the difference then and the difference as to how much the power islam holds now is something that can't even compare it's a process nothing just starts out just like that picks up just like that i mean it was a process and they've worked hard the people behind this have worked hard to bring it to where it is right now um he also spoke about faith faith is something that many people should have as long as you believe in god and you trust that god will see you through many situations he'll see you whether an enemy wants to attack he'll see you through that and you always come out from um, on top you always be the top of everything as long as god is guiding you another thing that confuses me is this i feel like i've asked this maybe even over two years ago or two years ago i'm not sure what's really the difference and this is not to bash any religion i don't bash any religion i'm not like that but then i'm just wondering out of curiosity what's the difference between um the black stone what's it the kaaba the kaaba what's the difference with what people do because people go around it maybe i guess praying yes and they uh, bow their heads towards it then we have, we've got other people that bow to um the statue of mary and there's other people that do what bow to the statue of jesus on the cross what's the difference between these actions I know someone is going to say this one is praying to this, this one is praying to this, but then what really is the difference other than that? Because at the end of the day, both, all three examples I've given, that all they think or they know that they're praying to God. So I just want to understand the concept behind that. Otherwise, I'm always glad to hear what you guys have to say. There's actually people that comment things that I learn from and this is what I want to do so let me know what you guys think make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video